What's going on guys? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And we are continuing our series on the monomyth, particularly the initiation steps. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out my other videos on the topic. They all kind of lead up to this step. But for those who have been following, today we're going to talk about, in particular, the temptation phase or step in the initiation phase. Now, temptation, in, in, in Joseph Campbell's book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Joseph Campbell actually calls this the meeting with the temptress or something like that. As I said before with the goddess, don't get hung up on the sex of the character. It doesn't have to be a woman. It can be a man. The point is that this character is going to tempt your hero. Now, the reason why he chose Temptress when he wrote the book is a lot of the stories that Joseph Campbell looked at were ancient and some of them even medieval time stories, mythologies. And what he noticed was a lot of times these knights who would go out on these holy grail quests, you know, like Arthurian knights and stuff, Arthurian knights, they, they would be tempted by women who the main purpose of the character would be to pull them away from the quest so that they could come and just enjoy the pleasures of life, whatever that might be. So, the same theme holds true with this temptation aspect of the initiation trial. It, it has nothing to do with a person's sex or the act of sex. It really has to do with being tempted. And where, where a story can really earn its salt and where you can tell if an author or a writer truly knows what they're doing is how they handle temptation. Because as I said before in the video about the road of trials, throughout this whole period of initiation, you're testing the hero to see how well and how worthy they are to go further towards that goal of achieving the power that they're looking for. And temptation is one of the best ways that your story, pardon me, wait, chair just slipped. Temptation is one of the best ways that your story can depict different angles of the, the problem, the theme, the issue that you're trying to depict. For example, if, again, if, I'm going to use the example that I used earlier, if your theme is that it, instead of fighting and instead of running that a person should be still in the face of danger then what you want to do during the road of trials is show different scenarios where the hero is faced with those options they either have to run fight or stand still and maybe that hero is someone who likes to always jump into battle like Raphael from the Ninja Turtles and, and leap in head first. And so you show him fail a couple times, and, but then he realizes, he sees, say, Leonardo take a more temperate approach and succeed in defeating the foes. Well, then will come a phase during the Road of Trials where Raphael instead of going on his natural instinct to jump in to battle and fight the shredder or whoever he he says no maybe i should just sit back and wait for the shredder to come to me and it's at this point where michelangelo or someone else that that rafael trusts or or it, it takes advice from comes and says, hey, maybe we should attack from the right while you attack from the left. And so they are tempting him into doing the thing that that your story is trying to say is the wrong method. Now, 
maybe my example just then wasn't the best of examples, but I what I can do to redeem myself here is give you some examples from Lord of the Rings because in my opinion, Lord of the Rings is one of the best stories when it comes to temptation. It is riddled with temptation. It's J.R.R. Tolkien just kept hammering it home with all of the characters about temptation. And he used it to such a masterful degree that it really brings home the theme of his story. And when you look at Lord of the Rings, again, everything revolves around theme. So the theme of the Lord of the Rings, in a nutshell, is that power cannot be held on to. Power corrupts and it, it makes good people bad. So you, if you hold on to the power, you have to eventually give it up. You have to give it back to the world. That's what Frodo does. He, he casts a ring of power into the, the, the mountain of fire. In, and essentially what that, what's that showing symbolically and a subconscious level is exactly the theme of the story, which is don't hold on to power because it will corrupt and absolute power will corrupt absolutely. And in order to drive that theme home, J.R.R. Tolkien just, he starts the very beginning of the story, he starts talking about a Sildor and how a Sildor, instead of destroying the ring of, of instead of destroying the ring of power and throwing it into Mount Doom, he keeps it for himself. And then what happens? The ring betrays him. So already we're given an example of someone who was presented with the problem and was told what the right solution was, but decided against it. And then we see the consequences of what happens to that person. And then the next person is Gollum. In order, in over, well, it's Smeagol. And over the course of events, what happens? He's corrupted by the ring because he held on to it for too long. And when we consider, when we look at all the characters that Tolkien goes through, you know, at one point Frodo, well, so at one point you have Bilbo, who's had the ring for years, and he's starting to become corrupted like like Smeagol did. And you can, there, there's a little bit of that evil starting to build up inside of him. But in the end, Bilbo passes the test. He's able to leave the ring at Bag End. And then that's where Frodo's journey begins because Frodo picks up the ring. But Frodo immediately passes the temptation <laughs> because the first thing he does when Gandalf tells him what it is, he, he says, Gandalf, take the ring. I don't want it. And so immediately Frodo passes the temptation. And over and over again, Frodo passes the temptation, which is why he is the one that's worthy to be the ring bearer, to take the ring to Mount Doom, because he's the only one that anybody can trust to actually get rid of it. Then Frodo, uh, again, Frodo tells... He tells Gandalf to take the ring, and Gandalf says, whoa, I can't take this ring. If I take this ring, I would take it with every good intention. But the power that it would wield through me would consume me, and, and, and it, would just, it would destroy everything around me. Is this, that's essentially what he says. Gandalf pass, passes the test, and we learn another insight from this temptation, which is, even though you may have the best of intentions, you can still be corrupted by power. So yet again, we have J.R.R. Tolkien hammering home his point, but at a different angle, hammering home the theme of his story. And then what, one last example from Lord of the Rings, and I'll, I'll stop beating that horse, but is Galadriel. When, when, the Fellowship gets to the Woodland Realm, and Galadriel, maybe, well, and Galadriel, they're, they're talking at the, at the, it's like the Wishing Well, I forget the name of it, but 
she show she kind of shows him a glimpse of the future in the in the wishing well, and then she talks to Frodo about the the journey that that is still ahead of them, and like you know he needs to be careful in all this. Frodo's like, man, I don't want to do this. He's like, I've had enough. I have my fill. Why don't you take the ring? And he offers it to her again. So yet again, Frodo is passing his test of how to be a ring bearer. And now Galadriel is tempted. And this, and she even says, this is something that I have wanted and thought, and thought about for a long time. And she, unlike many other people, know the power of the ring very intimately because she is also a ring bearer. She's one of the, I think, three ring bearers of the elves. And she, you can see, you get just a glimpse of what Galadriel would be like if she took the ring. Just immense power. But the thing is, she denies it. She, she even says to herself, I passed the test. And it's very interesting because Galadriel, the lesson that we learned from Galadriel about the theme is that know yourself and know your limits. Know what your vices are. Know, know who you are. Because Galadriel knows that what kind of power that ring has. And she knows that if it were given to her, she would want, she would be, what does she get? She says something like a queen as treacherous as the ocean or something like that. Like she just, she's, she knows that she would wreak some havoc. She doesn't even want it. She's not like Gandalf and say, hey, I would do this from a point of good. She's like, no, I know there's a dark side to me and I would totally give in to it. But because she knows that and she admits that, she's able to, to, to pass the test. And again, it's showing the theme of the story from another character's point of view, from another standpoint. So temptation can be, I, my belief is that temptation is a great tool. It can be used in so many different aspects. The other thing is, don't think that temptation has to come just on the road of trials. It could come in the beginning, come in the end, it come, come all over the place. Temptation is one of those things where it should be, it's one of those things that could be peppered throughout the entire story and it, it only makes it better. There should be one point where the temptation is the highest and that that really should bring home the message but it's that's the one that i would call quote unquote necessary again though if you were to pepper in a whole bunch of different temptation points throughout the story that's perfectly fine a lot of writers try to leave the ending of a scene or a chapter on a question and a lot of times that question should be a decision or a temptation that a character has to deal with <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been filming a lot, so my, my throat was a little sore. Switching gears here a little, we'll look at Star Wars and the major temptation there, just to give you another glimpse. Star Wars, although it does have temptation, it's nowhere near the amount of Lord of the Rings. But the major aspect in Star Wars of temptation is this thought of joining the dark side giving in to your kind of primal feelings and letting go of your altruistic side and going down the easy path. And we see two really good examples where we have Darth Vader, who is the example, the antithesis of what Luke Skywalker is trying to attain throughout the entire journey and eventually does attain, which is Darth Vader is someone who did give in to the dark side. He was tempted. And there's a twofold lesson in that. One is that if you go down the, the, this path of, of giving in to your primal desires and power, Again, another another motif of power corrupting, and and give into 
to the easy way, then you will become this non-human being like Darth Vader. On the flip side, however, interestingly enough, because Vader is the one who ends up destroying the Emperor and bringing balance to the Force, he also is the representation of redemption from the dark side, which is something that Luke does is not cannot represent either. So here we have Luke representing the person who never gives in to the dark side or tries not to, fights against it. Then we have Darth Vader, who is someone who has given in, and but yet he's redeemed by changing back to the good side. And when he does that, he shows us two different aspects. And then the fourth aspect is the emperor, which is someone who he's just the epitome, the epitome of evil. And he thrives on the dark side. He preaches the dark side. He encourages everyone to feed into their anger, feed into their hate, feed into their lustful, primal feelings of just impulsiveness. And because of the, the that dynamic, you get to see, even though there's not nearly as much temptation as there is in Lord of the Rings, you can see very different aspects of the theme through those characters and the temptation that they face just by dark side versus light side. So that is temptation in a nutshell. The last thing I will say is to just reiterate, sometimes temptation can be as simple as a person trying to tempt the hero from staying on the journey. Sometimes it's a person trying to tempt a hero from going on the journey in the first place and saying, oh, you know, it's much safer here. Why would you go when you have everything made right here, right now? Or it could be someone at the end of the road of trials when you've received the boon and you, you're supposed to take it back to the ordinary world and that person it, or, or maybe the hero themselves thinks, why would I want to leave? I've got the power now. Why? What is the point? Why? Why leave? But that temptation is to prevent. It's essentially stopping the quest. Any temptation that would stop the quest is also a valid temptation. If it if it pulls the hero off of their main goal. So, again, hope this was helpful. And if you like it, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in later videos. Take it easy.